glorious years of Britannia. Arthur, the once and future king, ruled from Camelot, blessed by the power of the Holy Grail. It was a time of peace and prosperity. Arthur, son of Uther, had already united the war-torn lands and claimed his rightful place on the throne. He had faced the fairy lords, and he had gathered the knights of the round table. This is where most stories end, but our tale begins right here. When Morgorse, the Witch Queen of Orkney, finds a way to reach the terrible race of the Formorians, defeated and exiled by the heroes of the Shi ages ago. When something ancient and powerful awakes beyond Britannia. King Arthur saw the signs and the omens, and he was worried. So it happened that he finally called the ones closest to him to discuss what should be done. He summoned Sir Lancelot, the bravest knight who ever lived. Sir Kay, his most faithful warrior and friend. And Queen Guinevere, his wife, famed for her otherworldly beauty. They all gathered out in the wilderness, in the shrine of the Holy Grail. Something happened in the shrine, something terrible. A blinding light turned night into day, destroyed the Holy Grail, and left only Arthur's lifeless body behind, sweeping away all the others. The sky first turned as white as bone, then it became red like spilled blood. King Arthur barely survived. He has a gaping wound in his side that will never heal. Arthur is sick, and when the High King suffers, the whole realm feels his pain. His illness is slowly destroying the entire land. Camelot is in chaos. The Knights of the Round Table have disappeared or turned against each other. Arthur's former kingdom has turned into a terrible wasteland, where the Formorians dwell who came out of the darkness as soon as Britannia fell. Heroes try to stand their ground, only to perish one after another. Arthur the Maimed King was taken to the last safe place in Britannia, the magical forest of Bedegrain. The future of the realm now relies upon Arthur's son, leading the remaining armies of the Pendragons against the otherworldly hordes. Night is falling, and if the king fails, the nightmare will never end. In just one year, the glorious kingdom of King Arthur has fallen apart. Camelot is a mere shadow of its former self, no longer the hub of the realm. The Round Table has dissolved, and lone knights are making desperate stands in an attempt to stop the hordes of Formorians who roam the countryside. The entire south is in chaos and decay. Arthur still lies wounded, barely conscious most of the time. It now falls to you, William Pendragon, son of the once and future king, to face the tide of monsters and keep hope alive. It is a daunting task that will require exceptional courage and skill. You have been tutored in the many arts of governing and knightly virtues since you were a child. But you are far from ready, and time is now short. You must focus your training in one area so that you can embark on your quest as soon as possible. You begin your training, but there is much to be done in the meantime. 
Heartwood Keep and the lands around it are in deep disorder, and there is no leader to keep matters in hand. With the king incapacitated, you must govern the land in his stead. But first, you must assume your position as leader. Your father wanted you to grow up free from the influence of Camelot, so you have spent much of your life in seclusion, and people don't know what to expect of you. A regal act is required to show them who you are. The people rejoice at the return of the Crown Prince, and morale clearly improves in Hotwood Keep. But the cheers are quickly muffled by a myriad of troubles, and you are soon faced with a host of difficult decisions. The most pressing matter you face is the arrival of a sizable group of refugees. The keep is already getting crowded and food is becoming scarce. You must decide what to do with these people. After a few months of intense training, you are as prepared as you can be at such short notice. But even though you have the blood of a true hero in your veins, you are still but one man. You'll need an army to lead. Besides the remnants of the Iron Guard, all you currently have is a ragtag band of volunteers. Britannia is in ruins, and the refugees fleeing from the growing wastelands flock towards the forest of Bedegrain, where... Yes, my liege. Sir Agravaine used to be a knight in Camelot, but now he has become the self-appointed lord of the refugees in Sherwood. He rules with an iron fist, which is a vital trait in such grave times, but which also means that he has his fair share. Bedegrain used to be the deep wood of the Shi, a gateway to Turnanog, but the gates have closed. The region called Sherwood is still an untamed wilderness, though. You leave your army at the edge. You can only move slowly in the dense undergrowth, but it feels much safer than risking the open roads in a province close to open rebellion. Your hunch proves to be right when you notice a group. The rebellious Sir Marok is famed for his talent with the longbow, and his men also favor this weapon which makes them you learn that the castle was built in that part of the forest where even mortals you see a guard post built of crude logs blocking the road it's huge at first it seems that you can easily defeat the dozen the rebels take you to greenway castle 
and escort you. The knight tells you his name. He is Sir Agravaine. You assure the knight that the guards didn't make you drink the same brew. You deal with the lock. You find Sir Agravaine's warriors in a large room. You leave the grim castle in a hurry. The enemy hero is casting a spell. A spell was cast, 